My name is Martin Gustisha, and I'm here to show you the Hearthstone Natural Language API uh, querying system. So as you can see here on the left in the terminal window, we have an IPython session open, and we've imported the Hearthstone library that I've created. And basically what this is going to do is allow us to run the library's functions and look up cards, either single card stats or cards by group, um, in a natural language fashion. And on the right here, you can see an example of a Hearthstone card. Um, the important stats are the cost in the upper left, the attack in the bottom left, and the health in the bottom right. One of the most important features of the Hearthstone game is building a deck, which is going to allow you to be successful when you're playing against other people. So when you're building these decks, as there's like over 700 cards right now, it's not always... Uh, it's not always easy to see which ones you should choose, and so having a way to, in natural language, query the system to return all the cards of a certain type can be an important procedure. So the first thing we can do is look up cards either by race, faction, or class. <clears throat> uh, looking up cards by class is important because you build a deck according to a class, and so if you're building a mage deck, um, you can use mage cards, but not those from other classes. So if you want to see a very simple query, I could just do mage cards, and it'll come back with a list of all the name of the mage cards. Um, this, I mean, it's, it's technically natural language, but it looks more of like a keyword search. Uh, so if I do this example of a different class, I could say list all of the paladin cards and it will still come back with a list of all the cards from the Paladin class. Uh, you can also ask it in question form, so like, can you show me the Warlock cards? And again, it'll come back with a list of all the Warlock cards. And so how this is happening is the query is passed to wit.ai, which is a natural language engine that Facebook recently acquired and are working on for their messenger service. Uh, but they made it free to the public, which is awesome because it really does abstract away a lot of the natural language power that we learned in class, um, even though you can leverage the type of things we learn, like tagging, parsing, uh, different grammars and semantics uh, when using Wit AI. So the next thing we can query is by race. Um, so race in Hearthstone, I think there's seven or eight different ones, and the thing about them is that they synergize very well. So if you have a deck that uses cards of a certain race, they're going to buff each other and get stronger and work together. Um, those queries are going to be a lot of the same forms. So if I say, can you list all of the cards in the Murloc race? It'll come back with a list of all the cards from the Murloc race. Again, you can just do a very simple query, um, such as demon cards, and it will come back with all of the cards of the demon race. And again, a somewhat simple query, but lists all of the dragon cards. And it will list the dragon cards. Um, some of them are listed multiple times because there's multiple versions depending on a situation or how they come into the game. Um, so I didn't filter out by those, but it'd be very easy to do. Uh, the last search of this type is searching by faction. Uh, faction really isn't important to the game at all. It's just kind of a lore aspect of it, so I'll just do it quick. Um, so if I run it and say, show me cards that belong to the horde. Uh, it will return a list of all the cards that have the Horde faction. Um, there's only three factions, Horde, Alliance, and then Neutral, so I'm not going to cover that one too much because it's rather unimportant. Um, another feature we have is to filter all the cards by one of the major stats I mentioned before, either cost, attack, or health. So if I run it and say, show me cards with four health, it's going to bring a list of all the cards that have a health stat of 4, which is quite a few. Um, like I said, there's a lot of cards in the game, so it's not a surprise. 4 is a pretty common health value, so it's not a surprise that it returned a huge list. Um, one of the biggest filters that's important to the game is sorting by cost, because you want your deck to have what's called a good curve. Um, since you're able to use one more cost point or one mana each turn, 
the curve means you want to play a one cost card on turn one, a two cost card on turn two, etc. And you want those to be powerful cards. Uh, so having the right amount of cards with certain costs in your deck is very important. So again, if we run a query and say list the cards with a cost of 20, uh, there's only a couple of them, or there's only one of them, I guess, because they're very rare. Um, as you can see on the right, these are sorted by cost, and here's our one 20 cost Molten Giant. Again, there's a couple of them here that cost 12, so if I run it and say, um, can you list cards that cost 12? It comes back with these two, the Clockwork Giant and the Mountain Giant. Um, lastly of this, um, there you can filter them by attack. So if you do show cards with five attack, it will, just like the other cases, run <clears throat> and show cards with five attack. As you can see here, again, there's a lot because that's a rather common stat. And lastly, and the toughest to get working, was searching by individual card. So searching by individual card can be nice if you can't remember a certain stat that a card has or if you're thinking of putting in the deck but you want to make sure it works. So if I run another one, I can say, what is Golemag's health stat? And you can see Golemag on the right of the screen here has a health stat of 20. So we expect the API to return 20. And sure enough, after running the query through wit and getting the keywords out of it, we have Golemag's health is 20. <clears throat> Uh, single cards are searchable by any of the big three statistics. So, for examples, if we run it and say, what's Ysera's attack? It'll come back and say Ysera's attack is four, and we can check that in this website over here. And sure enough, Ysera has an attack of four. Um, lastly, we can do health. So if I say what's Dr. Boom's health, it will come back and it'll say Dr. Boom's health is 7. And so if we look here, <clears throat> sure enough, we have Dr. Boom here with a health of 7. Uh, the last feature I was going to show is wit.ai itself and specifically its validation features. So what you see here is commands that we issued to wit.ai if it loads. And what we're able to do is it highlights the keywords that it thought we pulled out of it, and we're able to validate these. So all the ones we did were just right so we can validate them. And on the right here, we see a confidence. Um, so the more validation you do, the higher this confidence is going to grow. And so when we issued the command, what's Ysera's attack, it was very confident that it got the right answer. <clears throat> And the real power of wit.ai comes from you just defining a couple of different ways in which the system will be asked questions, and then you ask it different forms, you can validate it, change it. For instance, if this one was wrong and this was supposed to say a class card, you can change the intent, and then you can highlight a word and choose the entity, and then validate it. Obviously, this is wrong, so I don't want to validate it. Um, but yeah, that's the main gist of the program and how wit.ai works. So thanks for watching.